my dear friends, and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. Natasha Liu Bordiso has opened up about Star Wars Rebels and what it's like playing Sabine Wren in live action in a new interview with The Hollywood Reporter. More than anything though, she reassured fans who were worried by her comments in a previous interview, where she says that you don't have to have seen Star Wars Rebels to watch Ahsoka. Now when she made that statement, we've got to realise that it was pure marketing. A lot of folks took it out of context. She was saying that it will inevitably be a show that newbies and casual fans can watch, but those who've seen Star Wars Rebels are at a huge advantage, and in this interview guys, she seems to imply just how important Star Wars Rebels is to Dave Filoni's Star Wars Ahsoka, so no more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. Day Shift star Natasha Liu Bordizzo is living her Star Wars dream as Sabine Wren. The actor was in full vampire mode on the set of her new Netflix movie when she received a surprise offer to join Ahsoka. So they say, Natasha is bursting at the seams as she tries to contain her excitement over landing her dream role as Sabine Wren in the Star Wars galaxy. In May, the Australian actor was introduced to thousands of fans at Star Wars Celebration as she promoted 2023's Disney Plus series Ahsoka, alongside Ahsoka Tano herself, Rosario Dawson. The road to being cast as the artistic Mandalorian warrior started when Bordiso sent in a self-tape and it happened to include a scene from Top Gun as well as another unrelated scene that reminded her of Harrison Ford's Han Solo. So even though she didn't know that she was auditioning for a Star Wars project like Ahsoka, Captain Solo's spirit was very much on her mind and hasn't left. In her own words she says, in the audition scene, this lady was trying to pay my character to help her and my friend and I were like, it's almost like a young Han Solo kind of feeling. So that was just complete charm and I still think of his role often, energetically, as I'm doing Ahsoka now. It's just such great energy and very inspiring. And so now we come onto the section about Star Wars Rebels. Even though Ahsoka will have its own identity, Natasha couldn't help but revisit the animated Sabine Wren, voiced by Tia Sakaar, in Star Wars Rebels. And here is the quote, It's almost like a memory book, that's what I feel Star Wars Rebels is for me. It's just this kind of free prep that I never even had to do as an actor, because it's all been done for me. My character's memory is already recorded. So they encouraged me to watch it, but obviously I did watch it, because how could I not? So she strongly acknowledges that her character's established history in Star Wars Rebels is going to inform where she's headed in the Ahsoka show. The other day, Jon Favreau even confirmed that the series is a continuation of, quote, what Dave set up in animation, but we've also got to bear in mind that it's a fresh start in both the lives of Ahsoka and Sabine. In the Rebels epilogue, before Sabine and Ahsoka go out to find Ezra, Sabine worked out what it was that Ezra was relying on her for. It wasn't just the protection of Lothal, but to go out and find him years after the Purge took him and Thrawn and blasted them into hyperspace. From here, Sabine and Ahsoka's journey begins, but their futures are very much an unknown, and for me as a big fan of Rebels, that's a really exciting prospect. Where do we go from here? A clean canvas allows Dave Filoni to write a fresh story, and might also connect to The Mandalorian. We know that Lucasfilm have big plans for Ezra and Thrawn, and Ahsoka's first season, if it is going to be multiple seasons, could be a nice bridging point between Rebels and the future of the so-called Mandoverse that's going to connect to future stories with these characters. Of course, we've already had Ahsoka and Bo-Katan appear in The Mandalorian Season 2. The setup is very much there. Natasha is an excellent actor, and reading this interview, I don't think there's anyone better suited for a live-action Sabine Wren. Now, I've brought this up once or twice before, but I'm starting to think that she wasn't just cast for Ahsoka, but also for Mando Season 3. I say that based on when she was cast, and also comments she made that implies she worked on a Star Wars project before Ahsoka went into production, so that could of course be The Mandalorian Season 3. There are of course plenty of rumours that say she will appear alongside Ahsoka in both, and that would make a lot of sense. But going back to this interview, that's not all she said about the Ahsoka show. She also mentions doing her own stunts. She's a very physical and fit actor, with immense experience with swords, stunts, etc. So let's see what she said. Her role as a vampire hunting vampire required a great deal of stunt training, and it served as a nice warm-up for Ahsoka's own extensive stunt training. This is what she said. Day shift stunt training helped a lot, especially with weapons training. Everything and anything helps. Even if you're a physical person and physically fit, the act of being choreographed and really intense fight is still something to get used to. There are things like not squinting when you're about to be hit. There are just so many little things that are jarring unless you're used to stunts, so it definitely helped. Now this is not the first time she mentions using weaponry. Now we know that Sabine Wren is competent with blasters, but also the Dark Saber. I'm not saying she will eventually end up with it. Din Djarin has it at the moment, but another weapon she's holding on to is Ezra's lightsaber. So could we see her use that in the Ahsoka show? That'd be amazing. 
So that is pretty much the bulk of Natasha's interview, and you can find the full thing on HollywoodReporter.com. I'm so excited for Ahsoka. Personally, it's in my top three most anticipated Star Wars shows, along with Andor and The Mandalorian. And I really think that Ahsoka has a big chance to really hype up the fandom again. It's going to draw in big numbers not only for Mando fans, but also those of us who've been watching over the years in The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. So let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below. And so now, my dear friends, we're going to stay on the subject of The Mandalorian Season 3. A casting report that appeared back in May has been resurfacing as the direct listed out all of the confirmed and rumoured cast for the third season. Among them is legend Tim Meadows, and while rumour of his involvement stems back to May, it sort of went under the radar. When Lucasfilm showcased some of its upcoming Star Wars projects at Celebration, a published description of the third season listed Tim Meadows in an undisclosed role. With a legendary run in the comedy world under his belt, the Saturday Night Live alum Tim Meadows is set for an undisclosed role in season 3. Meadows himself has remained silent on the issue and has not spoken a single word of it, but given his calibre and sheer reputation, it's going to make season 3 more of a must-see than ever before, especially considering he's joining Christopher Lloyd. But who do you think he's going to play? Let me know in the comments down below. Now we're going to return to the Mandalorian to finish things off, but staying on the subject of casting, we have some Andor news. Over the last few days, as I've covered, various outlets and casting agencies have revealed the names of of some new characters in the show, but one has been left deliberately confidential and undisclosed. I'm talking about Rosalind Halstead, who is set to feature in at least three episodes of the first season, but Spotlight.com, which has unveiled numerous characters, has kept hers a secret. And so the big question is, who is she playing and why is it so secretive? Stuff like this gets me really pumped because there's clearly a reason to her being left a mystery, someone to look out for when the show drops in exactly one month from today. Super exciting stuff, guys. And so finally, calling all fans of LEGO Star Wars some awesome updates today. The first LEGO Star Wars 2023 rumoured set list is here, and there are some very exciting things coming our way. As reported by Promo Bricks, at least 15 LEGO Star Wars sets are rumoured for the first half of next year. Among these, we have a May the 4th promo, Star Wars Wars Brickheads, a Slave 1 Microfighter, the 501st Battle Pack, two sets for The Mandalorian Season 3, one that's $34.99 and one that's $100, a TIE Bomber, Captain Rex's Helmet, Commander Cody's Helmet, the second Death Star Throne Room Diorama, an Endor Speeder Bike Chase Diorama, a UCS set of $239.99 and an unspecified helmet collection, but I want to focus on The Mandalorian set because there's been some speculation in the LEGO Star Wars fan community of what these two sets could be, the cheaper one at $35 and the more expensive one at $100. So let's go through some of the speculation. While we don't know much about the plot of season 3, one thing, or should I say one planet we know is going to play a big part, is Mandalore. And one scene from the leaked celebration footage is Bo-Katan on a throne. Din Djarin and Grogu walk up to her, so could this be a more affordable way of obtaining a Bo-Katan minifigure? Another speculated LEGO set is Navarro. Din Djarin and Grogu are returning to see Grief Karga, and he's wearing some magnificent red robes. This could be one location that we could see made into a set, maybe the local town that also includes a statue of IG-11. As for what the larger set could be, some fans speculate this could be an Imperial Star Destroyer. It was part of the Mando Season 3 footage, and we haven't had a non-UCS version of the vehicle since 2014. Those are just some of the guesses though. What kind of sets would you like to see come out of Mando Season 3? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And so with that, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg. Have a good one.